Let's talk about risk. Let's talk about rate. And let's talk about the subtle differences between these two ideas. Super important in epidemiology. So stick with me. Boom shakalaka. Now, we'll start off with risk, and you'll see there's a little formula that I've got there. That really is shorthand. Don't think of that as a definition. It just helps us get to where we're going. And there's nuances around both the numerator and the denominator. So let's get into it. Risk really refers to the probability that an individual will develop a disease or a health outcome during a specified period of time. And it's expressed as a proportion, so between 0 and 1, or as a percentage between 0 and 100%. Now, if we look at the little diagram that I've got, and we'll build in the formula and talk about how to apply that. I've got four people, person one, two, three, and four, and years one, two, three, and four. So four years, four people. And person one comes into our time frame already sick, right? So that blue little line there would not represent a new case and so wouldn't contribute to the number of people that, the numerator, the number of people that got sick, right? So that's the first thing I want to point out. It's new cases. If a person comes into uh, the time frame with the disease, uh, that incidence is not counted. The next thing to notice is that person two got sick twice. And how do we deal with that? And that depends a little bit on whether or not you are wanting to calculate what we call person-based risk or incidence-based risk. And usually we're talking about person-based risk. So unless otherwise specified, we're talking about the probability of a person getting sick in a particular time frame. So uh, how would we interpret this diagram as it is at the moment? Well, of the four people that were at risk, two of them got sick. So the typical interpretation of this diagram with respect to risk is that two of the four people got sick and the risk was 50%. In other words, of those four people, there was a 50% chance for each of them that they would get sick in the four years that we're considering. Now, if we were talking about incident-based risk, we would say uh, 75% because we would count the two occurrences of of the disease in person too. A couple of other just things to to keep in mind. When we talk about risk, say uh, it's the denominator is the people that are at risk at the beginning of the time period. But person one was sick at the beginning of the time period. And so strictly speaking, at that point in time, not really risk, depending on the disease, you know, but for most diseases, not at risk of getting sick then because they will, were already sick with whatever disease we're talking about. Most diseases, you can only have it once at a time. In this case, we would still count person one in the denominator because they recovered from the illness and then continued to be at risk of getting sick during the rest of the four years. But this is where sort of subject matter expertise matters because there are some illnesses for which if you've had it at all, once you've recovered, you are not at risk of getting it again. So if it's a disease like that, person one would not be included in the denominator. If it were a chronic illness like diabetes, once you've got diabetes, you've got diabetes. You don't recover from it necessarily. I mean, I understand that there's nuances to all of these things, but you know, let's just sort of say you've got diabetes. It's not like the flu where you bounce back and then you're at risk of getting it again. So whether or not you count person one in the denominator in terms of the cohort of people at risk depends a little bit on the disease that you're talking about. So you need to bring that subject matter expertise to the fore. Um, so this is why I say like it's difficult just to look at a formula and say, well, this is how we understand risk. You need to think about what it is that you're trying to calculate. Now let's talk about rate. Okay, once again, we've got new cases as the numerator. And once again, this is just basically saying if one of the people comes into this time frame already sick, uh, that disease incident or that health outcome incident wouldn't be counted in the numerator. So it has to be a new incidence of the disease in the time frame that we're talking about. The big difference between rate and risk is that the denominator is person time at risk. And that's what I've tried to illustrate in this diagram. Uh, in the diagram, the green lines are the time frames during which the person was considered to be at risk or that we were measuring the extent to which they were at risk. So person one was considered to be at risk for all four years. Person two, for example, may have died at the end of year two. And so in year three or four, they didn't contribute to person time at risk. Uh, similarly, person three you know, wasn't part of the cohort in year four and person four from year two, three and four. Now, it could be that they died and so they no longer made a contribution to the sort of cohort of people uh, at risk, or it could be that you're running a study and that they dropped out of the study for some reason or for any reason you like that they're not being counted anymore uh, and followed up and uh, observed as people who may in fact get an incidence of the disease. And so we count up the person years at risk, in this case, uh, person 
person one contributed four years, person two, two years, person three, three years, person four, one year. You add it all up, it's 10 year. person years at risk. There were three incidents of disease. So it's 0.3 cases per person year. Um, okay, so that's rate. So the big differences between risk and rate is that rate does take time into account in the denominator. Risk does not. Risk tells us about the probability of an individual developing a disease and rate really tells us about the speed or intensity of the disease occurrence in a population. If you do any kind of research, I am about to blow your mind. Watch this. I've come to consensus and I've put in my research question. And what I want to know is what is in the literature. Now, consensus is an AI search engine for research. I've asked the question, does social media negatively impact mental health? Let's see what consensus says. Consensus not only gives you a snapshot synopsis of what the research says, but it also allows you to look under the hood at the strength of the research that is informing the answer to that question. So if we look at our consensus meter, we can expand it out and look at not just the numbers, but the quality of the papers that contribute to the answers that are given. It also provides you with a narrative or a little literature review on the subject, and you can click on any of the references and it'll take you down to information about that paper. And once you're at the paper, you can click here, ask for more information about the methods, outcomes, results, etc., etc., the type of study that was done, the rigor of the journal that it was published in, the number of citations, and more. And here is one of my favorite features of consensus, where the paper is available, and if it's not, you can upload it. There is a ask this paper function. And yeah, you can read the paper, but of course you can ask questions and consensus will provide an answer like, were there any conflicts of interest? Summarize the paper for me. Does the paper take age into account? And you can type in any additional questions you want right there and an answer will appear on the screen. Unbelievable. So take a look at consensus today. I'll put a link in the description below. You will absolutely love it. If you want to access this little cheat sheet that I've written up, and if you can excuse my handwriting, you can go to learnmore365.com, get a free account, and you can access a whole range of cheat sheets, uh, not just this one. Uh, watch the next video. Don't ever change. Don't do drugs. Always do your best. Boom shakalaka. Bye.